Hey everyone, I'm going to get started. It's uh, 7 p.m. right on the dot and I want to make sure I honor everyone's time tonight. Uh, we're going to do our best to uh, keep it to an hour. If by chance we get timed out on the meeting or something happens where you get thrown off the call, all you need to do is go back to the link and click on it and it'll get you right back into the phone call. So just in case that happens down the line, uh, I wanna make sure we have a line of defense uh, to get ready to handle that. Uh, well, I am so thrilled uh, to be having this call with you tonight. Uh, if we haven't met, my name is Ann Rand. I work at Willow Creek in the Compassion Justice Department. Uh, one of the areas of my ministry is the Anti-Human Trafficking Group and I serve alongside a terrific team of leaders who are gonna be sharing some of their experiences tonight and actually teaching. Um, but also we have a wonderful guest speaker tonight, uh, uh, Nita Bellis, who has written the book In Our Backyard and is just one of my personal heroes um, and mentors for uh, the entire uh, issue of human trafficking. So I, I want to let Nita talk uh, in just a second, but before I do, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about the book that she wrote that really changed my trajectory and, and is actually was the, the building block to our anti-human trafficking ministry at Willow. So her book, I'll hold it up, I don't know if you can see it too great, but it's called In Our Backyard. I don't think you can see it, but uh, In Our Backyard. And somebody handed it to me uh, way before we even started our anti-human trafficking ministry. This is like over a decade ago. And they said, you really ought to read this book. And I will tell you, my eyes were opened. Um, I had known about the sex trafficking industry. Um, but knew even less about labor trafficking uh, and then knew even less about child trafficking. Um, things like groups like um, children's choirs coming from third world countries coming into this country and, and uh, gymnastics groups and oh, the magazine groups and uh, you name it. She just opened my eyes to a whole world of uh, children who, and teens who were being exploited. And it was probably, uh, it's, it's a fast read, but it's a, a fantastic read. And uh, I just wanted to share a little piece from the book right now before we go on, because this is just right from the very beginning pages. And it's just a comment by one of the people who was endorsing the book. It says, wow, what a wake-up call to the church. Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes 4.1, Behold the tears of the oppressed. They have no comforter. Nita Bells in our, in our backyard serves as a wake-up call to the church to look in their sanctuary, at their next-door neighbor, in the restaurant their worshipers will eat at on Sunday morning and throughout their community and see the tears of the oppressed. In Our Backyard is more than a simple wake-up call. It is also a call to action to become the shepherds that God has called each of us to be. It's a call to action to rescue, protect, and comfort human trafficking victims. To stop human trafficking, good people will need to rise up, look, and really see what is happening in their backyard and then do something about it. And uh, I, I mean, it's powerful and that is exactly how I felt uh, when I read this book for the first time. I've read it cover to cover and uh, it was powerful. So I thank you all for um, coming to participate tonight. Um, without any more of my talking, um, you know how much I love Nita, love her work, her organization, and we've been uh, tremendously blessed. Um, uh, in our backyard and the work that she has done at the Super Bowls. But I'll let, she, let her tell you more. Uh, but um, we are so grateful to have you, Nita. So welcome. And uh, 
we'll be clapping for you. Uh, if we were at Willow, we'd be having a nice big clap. But um, since we're doing this Zoom, uh, just know that we're clapping in our hearts. And so thanks so much. And uh, please feel free to take over. There we go. Technology is one of my best spots. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? All right, great. Well, Anne, what a kind introduction. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just thrilled to be here. I'm honored to be here. Uh, I had a crazy day. And when I got on the Zoom a little bit ago with Anne and Cheryl and Melissa and Sophia, I was like, oh i'm among friends and so uh, you all are the balm of gilead to me too and thank you all for what you do um so i'm going to uh share my screen with you and um go to a powerpoint because you sure don't want to see my face talking nobody likes a talking head so um, i'm going to share this with you and let's see if i got the right mode okay come on there we go there we go all right well thank you all for coming on tonight i wish i was there with you that was the original plan and uh, i love being there at willow i love what you do and and some dear friends there so um Anne talked about my book. That actually was the first book that I, I released, but it's the second one is a redo of the first one. And so that one's not available. That was a Christian perspective. I have a few of those tucked in my garage if anybody wants them. But um, this one that I have here is the current one that's for sale. And um, so you can get that on Amazon. You can get it on our website, wherever. Um, and then the, uh, I'm just going to go into my presentation. Uh, the other picture in the upper right is of cages, and that's not because victims of human trafficking are in cages. Um, I mean, it happens occasionally, but it's not the norm. But a CNN photographer, friend of mine, wanted to do something to depict human trafficking. And uh, so he's got a mail order bride, he's got children, he's got adults sex trafficking, labor trafficking. So, um, and the point to that is that everybody has a talent and they can do something. So with this, um, everybody can do something. And we are absolutely victim-centered, trauma-informed. This is for each of you who had the courage to come out tonight and who are gonna have the courage to go out on Saturday. I am so excited. I just can't tell you how much I wish I was there. Um, but it's a courage award to you for taking this on. It's a tough topic and good on you for taking it on and making a difference. So Anne asked me to tell a little bit about myself and my journey. And um, I've always said that if there was ever a book written uh, about my life, it would be called She Stumbled Into It because I've never like made big plans. This is what I'm going to do and have a strategic plan that has to come, come to pass. Um, they're actually um, working on the beginning parts of a movie on my life. And I, I kind of suggested that title. I don't think they liked it very well, but um, it's really true. That's how uh, I have just seen things that I felt needed to be done and um, just stumbled in to try to make them happen. And you know, you make a lot of mistakes that way and, and that's how you grow. So in 2006, I began working on my master's degree in theology with a concentration in women's concerns. And um, this of course is uh, a lot of women are trafficked. And when I saw human trafficking, I said, God, that is the worst thing I've ever seen on planet earth. What do you want me to do? And I was surprised by the answer, <laughs> but, um, there was nothing written about human trafficking in the United States. And I knew that's what God had called me to. Um, and so I said, God, what do you want me to do? And uh, I really felt like God was saying, write a book. And uh, if you know me, you know, I'll do just about any, 
anything to get out of writing. I don't even like to write paragraphs, but I'm on my second book now, and that is all, all to the grace of God, because that's not me. Um, so be surprised. You'll be surprised at what God, God tells you to do when you ask. Uh, in 2009, uh, we started in our backyard. It was started as Central Oregonians Against Trafficking Humans at the uh, request of the U.S. Marshal over Human Trafficking in Oregon. But I always knew it was going to be a national organization, and uh, somewhere along the way, it got named in our backyard. In 2010, we did our first Super Bowl. We've done 11 Super Bowls now. Uh, Cheryl Chickie's been with us for the last five. Woo, woo and uh, plays a, a strong leadership role there. I, I so appreciate Cheryl and your team. Uh, 2011, my first book was released. That was a Christian perspective on human trafficking in the United States. And uh, what I found out was that not every church is as great as Willow about really seeing something needs to be done about human trafficking and continuing to do it. Uh, our audience was more law enforcement, schools, government agencies, those kinds of things. So in 2015, when Baker Books came to me and said, we want to acquire your book, I said, I need it to be secular. And they're a Christian book house, but they decided that was okay with them because they saw the need. So um, that was when the second book was released. And then in uh, 2015, we began our Convenience Stores Against Trafficking program, which you all are gonna be a part of, and we officially launched it in 2017, but it started at the Super Bowl in 2015 in the uh, San Francisco area. 2015 was my first staff member hired, and today we are a national nonprofit that is in all 50 states. Um, so we've stumbled into a lot of things. Um, so in our backyard is a nonprofit and our mission statement is linking arms across America in the fight against human trafficking. Uh, we have seven programs. I'm going to just fly over that really quickly so you can see a little bit about our programs. We're based in Bend, Oregon, but uh, we do work in all 50 states. Uh, freedom stickers, we'll talk a lot about, so I won't elaborate on that right now. Teens Against Trafficking is our schools program, and uh, we go in several school districts in Oregon. We're hoping to expand that further, but prevention is so much better than recovery if you can do it, because there's nothing to recover from, and, and uh, so we really try to do that with the Teens Against Trafficking program. Convenience Stores Against Trafficking, we'll talk about that. Super Bowl, I'm not going to talk much about, but Cheryl's got a lot of experience there. You can hit her up for any questions you have. Uh, legislative Advising, uh, we do a, a fair amount of that, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Survivor Advocacy, um, we're known as a friend to survivors, and while we don't provide direct services, we do a lot of referrals. And then we do a lot of training and awareness. So freedom stickers are kind of going to be the cornerstone of what you all are going to do. And the top pictures you see there, uh, that was our original freedom sticker in 2011. And you can see where we are in the 2020 here on the right. It's a much better freedom sticker. Um, but uh, we, in 2011, we were looking for a way to help victims find uh, help and to raise awareness for everyone else. And I am actually a survivor of uh, domestic violence in my first marriage. And I've done a lot of domestic violence work over the years and found out that the best place for a victim to receive help is inside a bathroom stall because they're alone and they can ask for help. So we transferred that on over to human trafficking. Uh, it's the only place inside a restroom stall is the only place that a victim is alone and can ask for help. So it's, it's really strategic and it really works. Over the years, freedom stickers have been internet, intentionally perfected and we always run our, um, our designs and get, get input from survivors because they really know. In 2013 was uh, 
the first law that in our backyard worked to pass in Oregon that mandated that freedom stickers go out with every renewal of a liquor license in the state of Oregon go inside the bathroom stalls and a lot of other states began doing that at the time we got some national news and um, so there's just a ton of freedom stickers as well as others who have uh, taken the idea and run with it which is great uh, in 2018 we did another law freedom stickers in the rest stops, Senate Bill 375. And so now they are in uh, every rest area stall. And then in 2020, by now at this point, we have over 420,000 freedom stickers uh, distributed nationwide. So there, I get pictures from everywhere. Um, freedom stickers help. How, why do we bother with putting a little sticker inside a bathroom? They provide hope and a pathway for freedom for victims of both labor and sex trafficking. I think oftentimes we, uh, we think of human trafficking, we think of sex trafficking, but if you look at the freedom stickers, they depict, they don't depict somebody in sex trafficking or labor trafficking. It's really uh, kind of broad so that everyone can be, um, can relate to the photo. We have documented cases of recoveries I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, and awareness, people, um, people, I just was at an event the other night and somebody stopped me and said, oh, those little bathroom stickers, I saw it, I thought, I had no idea it was happening here. So it's an awareness that it's happening here and you can do something about it. The uh, Polaris Project, which I call the granddaddy of all human trafficking organizations, um, found through a study in the last couple of years that posting the hotline is the number one way to increase the arrests of traffickers. And so we are absolutely for that. Um, there was a situation in a, um, in a restroom I'll tell you about in a minute where a tip was actually written on the freedom sticker and they were able to chase that down. It's the number one way to increase rest of traffickers. We talked about that. IOB um, has placed freedom stickers in convenience stores, restaurants, bars, hospitals, community clinics, schools, uh, some schools they're mandated, um, strip clubs, casinos. Uh, uh, I had a funny thing that happened one day. I got a call on my phone. He's like, this is stars, and I need some more of those stickers they're making me put in the bathrooms. And I was just like, he, he didn't know he wasn't mandated, but I sure got him the stickers. It was pretty funny. Uh, casinos, buses, rest stops, lots, lots of different places. My dream is that freedom stickers would be in every restroom stall in America. Uh, here are some of those stories. The uh, come and go uh, convenience store recovered uh, a woman she was out one day she was had actually escaped from a trafficker and somebody picked her up and she needed help they took her to a come and go store that's a chain uh, if you don't know it um, and the employee had been trained she was recovered they arrested the trafficker um, here in oregon there was a woman who had a couple of kids she was going she stopped uh, at a convenience store and um, she was with her trafficker. She saw the freedom sticker, she made the phone call, she got through the evening and made that phone call and she and her kids are now alive, well, and put up in a nice home. Uh, she's going to school, she's getting all the services she needs. Uh, there's just a lot of stories like that nationwide. Uh, survivors have asked, when are you going to be in the bathrooms when we've when we've uh, been in events? So uh, we are in the bathrooms, and I'm just so thrilled about that. Sixty seven percent of survivors said they never saw a hotline when they were in the life, and seventy four percent said they would have liked to have one. There are a lot of other states that have uh, done laws with freedom stickers. The Kansas City Attorney General's uh, office co-branded with IOB. Uh, 
I was going to tell you about that other tip that we got in our local airport here. Sorry, that in our local airport here, somebody actually wrote a tip and the, um, the airport manager called me and said, you know, we've had people try to deface these stickers, but that's what was, this wasn't that they wanted to turn in the tip. So they turned in one of the pilots from a specific airline that was purchasing people for sex right there on the freedom sticker. So that's pretty exciting. <coughs> Excuse me. So convenience stores against trafficking. Um, it's modeled after truckers against trafficking who are good friends of ours. Um, endorsed by the National Association of Convenience Stores. It provides human trafficking awareness, in-depth training to convenience stores, and they post freedom stickers. Why convenience stores? Why, why that? Uh, because more than 155,000 convenience stores in the nation and half the U.S. population goes into those stores every day. Some people there more than once, but that count amounts to half the U.S. population. Restrooms are open to customers, 24 hours, a lot of them. And most importantly, survivors say they were in convenience stores every day. So a little history about how CSAT, Convenience Stores Against Trafficking, started. Uh, we used to go into the hotels at Super Bowl, and in Arizona, the lead investigator asked me because of a political snafu to go to gas stations that year. And we did, and that was uh, a home run. And uh, when we went to the convenience stores. So we officially launched that in 2017 in Houston, and then uh, launched the partnership with uh, Greater Houston Retailers Association there. As of July 2020, we're in over 19,000 convenience stores in 47 states, and more than 200,000 employees have been trained. I'm not going to talk a lot about this. This is something we do at Super Bowl, and Cheryl's going to uh, tell you a little bit about your missing children's outreach. It will be very rewarding. You're, you're going to love the missing children's outreach. Um, in May 2019, this short film won uh, an International Silver Telly Award, and it doesn't play very well on Zoom. So uh, Cheryl's going to play it for you in a little bit, but it's a, a depiction of real stories that have happened with Freedom Stickers and how they can make a difference, and most importantly, how you can make a difference. You can see Freedom Stickers are in all 50 states, but how can you help? Well, you can go to the event on Saturday, and I'm just so excited about that. Uh, you can be informed, learn more about human trafficking, the signs, read in our backyard, get online, listen to uh, the things that are happening at Willow. Speak up when you, when you see something. If you don't have that national human trafficking hotline in your cell phone, I'm gonna suggest you do that today volunteer and you're doing that on Saturday and I'm sure there'll be other opportunities. You can always support In Our Backyard or other nonprofits that are doing the work. And you can contact us for resources, training, freedom stickers, um, and there's our contact information and I know you can get it from Ann or Cheryl. Uh, so thank you all for taking the time to listen and for being heroes in this fight. I really appreciate it. And thanks again, Anne and Cheryl and the rest of the team. I so appreciate you. There we go. And I think Melissa is going to take over. From Thank here. you, Nita. Um, it's always good to hear from you. Now I lost you on my <laughs> on all these people here. <laughs> but thank you so much for sharing about In Our Backyard. I know that personally, that book has uh, really changed my life and opened my eyes. And the reason why I'm in the Willow, Willow Anti Human Trafficking Ministry. So thank you so much. Um, you. Cheryl is going to. Thank you. Cheryl's going to um, tell us 
more about the Freedom Stickers and what we'll do on Saturday. Um, but before she does that, just wanted to do some announcements and and just and just pray. Um, for those of you who are not in our newsletter, uh, and if you do want to to just be updated on events like this or future ones, make sure to email us at. Uh, oh my God, I already forgot. So sorry, anti-human trafficking at willowcreek.org, right? Uh, it's human trafficking at willowcreek.org. Okay, human trafficking at willowcreek.org. And um, yeah, that way you can be updated on, on our next events and uh, you'll get a, a monthly newsletter. We try not to bother you too much, so make sure uh, to email us if you want to be included in that. And so I'm just going to pray and, and Cheryl can lead us the way for what's coming up this weekend, which I'm so excited for. So if you want, you can buy your heads, whatever you want, or just um, thank you, Lord, for this evening. I thank you so much um, for this opportunity to be together, even though we're not together in person. I'm so thankful for technology that this still be done. We had a vision to have Nita over at Willow, but that's okay. Um, uh, we do what we have to do here with Zoom. And Lord, I just uh, thank you so much for Nita's life. Thank you for uh, using her to um, be obedient in, in, in leading us um, with her book and leading us with her organization and, and just um, giving us a little spark into what we can do individually in our communities. And I thank you so much for that. I thank you for this night. I thank you um, for the volunteers that are gonna go out on Saturday or for other people who plan to do this on their own, either with their small groups or, or with friends. Um, this is so impactful that one person or, or two people at a time can can just place a freedom sticker and you'll never know whose life it will change. And I'm so excited that we can all be a part of that, Lord. And so I just pray over to of the missing kids that um, we're gonna talk about that are on our list in our area, Lord. I pray that, um, that, that one of them or two or all of them uh, may be located, Lord. Um, I pray that the convenience store owners are open and receptive to what um, we got to show them. And I pray for the rest of tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Thanks, Melissa. Okay, so I wanna start off with that video that we wanted to share um, with a good connection. So you're gonna see me hook this up. And if um, uh, Melissa could unmute and just tell me to press play, when you see the screen actually up for you guys. So we do this well. I'm gonna start broadcast. Okay, let me know when to press play. Do you see the black screen? Yeah, you can press play now. All right, here we go. It's about four minutes, so just um, enjoy. And I have my volume up, so I hope everyone can hear.
Okay, so post freedom stickers, you're here. Um, we're super excited to really try to do the first hands on everyone in. We've been stuck in our homes for a while. Um, so we're gonna gear up and get on our masks. And remember that human trafficking is still happening through all of this, right? Um, so there's five K's out there. There's, we have a call center outreach. We have a text um, digital outreach now also. Um, but all those, we usually have volunteers come in and get trained. There's a process you go through of training. So this really is our first um, decision to say, hey, how can we involve anyone? How can you sign up as a volunteer? Call up a friend, call up a family member um, and say, come with me and let's utilize this amazing network of convenience stores because they see half the population every single day. Um, it's just mind boggling to me how many people those convenience stores see and how often the owners um, are really excited to be a part of this fight. So my past five years at Super Bowl, when this first started for the convenience stores, was really that aha moment of, you know, we come to the Super Bowl, we're surrounded around a bunch of traffickers and just unhealthy relationships and them, you know, traveling children, minors, teens, adults around that Super Bowl party atmosphere for trafficking. I never thought twice about what that reach would be like for convenience stores. They just don't even cross my mind. Um, but if you think about a gas station, the ins and outs, that availability for a victim to go in and work their hours, um, it really does make sense. So to be part of that, it's a safe place for you to visit. Um, the staff is usually very welcoming to you to come in and talk to them about it, even though you're not going to believe me. Um, you will feel like a salesperson for the first half second, but when you get your first yes, like let me see what you're doing, you will, your heart will turn and you will feel much more comfortable. So that's what I'm going to talk about right now is just how do we get that done? And I think the first question we always think of is, where do you go? I know I said convenience store, um, but I do think what makes it personal and organic is if it is in your own backyard. What gas station do you already go to? What convenience store do you shop at? That's the one we want you to go to because obviously we don't want everyone to just hustle and bustle around the, whole, um, the convenience stores around Willow Creek. We want you to go to where you live. So we try to stay within a mile. I mean, I think everyone has one within a mile. Um, usually 0.6 of a mile, there's a gas station for you to go to and pick three or four that maybe you go to often. The other idea is maybe around work to usually get gas around where you work instead. I know we're in an unusual situation where maybe you're working from home, um, but things like that. How often have you really visited a gas station with not driving as much and as often lately? Um, the other tip for which ones you would want to pick is one that's off your local exit to your expressway. Um, even in Schaumburg in our Northwest area, you will notice you know, a cluster of hotels and stays where the expressway is, and there's usually a gas station right around there. So that's your next hot spot uh, would be to get around that area. Um, if you've noticed this past year, maybe two years, you'll notice there's a mandated awareness form in the massage parlors. Um, if you get massages at like Massage Envy, I noticed mine, I was very proud of them, but they, they have to have an awareness for the victim national hotline in massage um, places and I think physical, um, what do you call it, physical therapy also and chiropractor offices. Um, otherwise, you might have noticed a national hotline number at our airport at O'Hare. There was a huge campaign this past year, um, big campaign sites everywhere and every week um, about the human trafficking um, national hotline. So you may be a little more familiar in our area, but um, I have not seen many bathrooms in the convenience stores posted around here. So I don't think you're going to find too many where they already have the stickers, the freedom stickers posted. So that's how I would suggest on picking where you're going to go. Um, and the next most important is how to prepare a team. We really don't want you going alone. We really want you with at least one other person. So when you show up Saturday to collect the info, please make sure you have um, whoever's going out with you. Um, 
in your car or coming to pick up stickers with you, that would be super duper helpful because then we can collect your signature that you're going to go out and do this because in our backyard, we'll want you to sign a freedom sticker consent form that you are you know, not going to be plastering these on the toll booths like teenagers do with skateboarder stickers. Um, but you're putting the stickers where they belong. Um, you're not sticking them on your forehead or I don't know what you would do with the sticker, but we just want to make sure you're being responsible with the sticker and using it for its cause. So you will have to sign this. If you pull up to the church between um, it's nine and 10 in the morning on Saturday, you can mail this in, but again, it's just that accountability factor of once you get your team together, or if you want to go at a different time, you know, being the mom of the group isn't fun. So the more you can convince them, I need your bodies here at Willow, meet me at Willow, and then we'll go out. I highly, highly suggest that for your own ease. Um, it's hard to collect people on the spot otherwise. Um, so you're going to meet at Willow between eight and 10, or I'm sorry, nine, don't come at eight nine to 10 in the morning um, and we will be there. And again, we will be there when you pull up, hoping you have an idea of where you're gonna go um, and also walk you through all of this all over again. We'll have multiple volunteers to come to your car and help you. So don't feel like if I don't got it tonight, I can't do this. This is very simple. We'll have all the paperwork for you when you pull up like a drive-through pretty much. Um, what is a successful visit? A successful visit is three things. We have the missing kids photo card. At Super Bowl, we have a full booklet, um, but Melissa took the time to look at our missing kid posters online and found eight, I think eight, whatever number, um, to show the convenience store workers. This is your ticket to your conversation with the staff member. When you show faces of children right away, they know it's real, they know you're not selling something, and they know they should listen. They see the faces and they, they want to help. So this is always your key card to get a conversation going. Um, if you leave this and only this at the store with them, it's already a successful serve. So just remember that. This is all we want you to leave really if it does feel um, that it's not the most welcoming experience. So just know this is, this always have this out when you're speaking with the staff member. The second part of making this successful is the freedom sticker. Like, make sure you have them, make sure you came and picked them up, and you use those right next to it, because you want to show the store that you're giving them things, we're not trying to take things from them. So have the physical pictures helps explain your story, um, and gets them to even look at it while maybe you're doing your little spiel, um, but they're going to be looking at this and touching it and feeling more connected to the cost. Um, three, the last thing we might try to do on your serve is get them to want to be trained and part of that convenience stores against trafficking. So those are the three main concepts that I want you to become familiar with, is the missing kids card, the freedom stickers, and CSAT, which is convenience stores against trafficking. That's a free training, and they will get a form on that if they want to continue further once you leave and connect more with NIDA. That's the conduit you know, to get these stores trained for all their staff, not just that one person you spoke to that day. Um, you know, they're always very kind. Does it continue on after? We don't know. So that's kind of that conduit of really linking arms fully um, to get this national. The forms. So I talked about empowering the staff. There are some forms you are going to take back with you and there's gonna be forms that you leave with them. Um, first glance is what do you say when you get there? We have a script that we will provide for you when you pull up on Saturday. Um, but most likely it will go something along the line is, hello, my name is blank. You know, I'm a volunteer today for In Our Backyard and we're doing a community awareness for missing children. That's like the top front line you're gonna use. And we brought photos of the missing kids here for you to look at because half the population visits your store, the stores all over America every day and we have you know, these going around all over the United States and we're trying to do a serve today. So it's very short, sweet, and just see if they smile. Um, the other thing I suggest you know to do is know who's going to talk when you go in that store and know who's gonna hang back with you and maybe write down the information about that store because we're gonna wanna know what store you went in. So someone should probably have a pen or the phone open while the other person is more hand, handling the conversations. Another great tip 
is to buy something. Buy some gum. Buy anything you can. Just take turns because you're going to visit probably four, I would say is a good, like three to five. You shouldn't spend more than an hour really doing this and you can hit about four to five if you just do a slew, you know, on your map. Um, and get in there and just pick something cheap, whether it's, you know, a, a cold coffee or, or something like that. But if you have something bought, now you're a customer. So they're going to treat you better. Um, they might listen longer. Um, so that's one of our best tips is buy a bag of chips. Like, seriously. Um, just buy something so when you're talking to them, they will talk to you. Um, the other thing I always found courteous was after I purchased, if someone showed up behind me to just pay and get gas and get out, I stepped aside and let them do that and then stepped back over. Because we want to remember they're working around the clock. This is staff, this is not part of their job. We are asking them to take time out of their day. Um, and you're going on a Saturday, so it's more of a busy weekend day. Um, so just keep those in mind. Like, we don't expect you to go in there and not fail. We expect you to go in there and be kind and maybe make a relationship. So with that, with what to say, I want to make sure I cover. So again, the tips are already on here um, about how many convenience stores see how many uh, people a day. And then also we kind of want to transition from help us find these missing kids to then the big human trafficking conversation, right? And how do you make that transition without scaring people because, you know, that topic of trafficking can just feel really um, awkward for the first minute of meeting someone, especially in a public place where customers might um, see you. So usually we end up with one line that's on there is that um, one in three children who go missing or run away are usually solicited um, to trafficking and sex within 48 hours. That's going to be like your ticket win. Um, and how do we uh, do that. Someone's asking, you can do it another day, and I'll go over that if you can't make Saturday. Um, so now we're here going, okay, so here's missing kids. Did you know they're at risk of trafficking? One in three are solicited within 48 hours, and how do we handle that? Um, we have a form on, on the back. This isn't printed out yet, sorry. So the one will have the photos, and right on the back, you will have what to look for for trafficking and how they would report. Because obviously if they see any of these missing kids, they're going to report no matter what. It doesn't matter if they think that child's being trafficked. Because we want them to understand all they're doing is observing. That's their only role. They don't have to rescue. They don't have to make a scene or try to grab the child or find out who that child is with. All this happens after if they've seen that child has left the store. Um, your job that day is not to identify trafficking and send in some big tip for us. Um, this is relationship building and networking and using them as eyes and ears as observers and also keeping the staff safe. Uh, we want them to know that they are our priority to keep safe and all reports can be made after they have left the store. So just keeping that priority in mind. Um, I know we can get amped up and want to help. Um, but we do want to honor the staff member that their store is also safe. That's a really great transition to say the safest way to reach victims of trafficking is through these freedom stickers. Because this way we're empowering the survivor to call for help on their own. Um, they probably have a phone. They're finally alone. Survivors have looked at our sticker to say and collaborate with us that this is what we want to see for us to get the help we need. And I could have used that between seeing John's that day. Okay, so this sticker matters. So that's what we wanna lead with is that transition. Today, this, this sheet could change, right? I mean, these are the kids right now, but what lasts forever is that sticker. So we really want your heart in a place of um, really just communicating that part that like your hope today as a volunteer is to accomplish this sticker in your store to help someone. So that's what you're gonna lead with, is just your passion, because trust me, it'll take you further than you think with people, because they can read you, right? I mean, you can read my passion saying that probably through this Zoom call. So just understand that these stickers matter and you'll do fine. Um, if they're kind of concerned about 
posting something, it's permanent, it's sticking, they're not the manager, they're not the owner, they may give you a little setback saying like, I'm not sure I can post this. Like, I, I would love to, they usually say that, I would love to. I don't know if I have permission. Totally fine. Um, what you're gonna do either way, whether they accept it or don't accept the sticker, is you're gonna say, I'm gonna leave you information for your manager to connect. Um, if you'd like him to call us and you leave them these forms and we'll have these forms ready for you. It's a letter to the owner and to the manager. Um, and there's also a form with everything about the freedom sticker to leave with them. Um, we don't leave the sticker with them because we don't know if it gets posted. Um, they would then connect and order stickers from Nita and Nita would send it for them and you don't have to do anything else. If they do say yes, and you will get a yes, um, I've already prayed it, so it's gonna happen. Um, you will need a signature from them saying, we allow in our backyard sticker in our bathroom. It's very obvious, it says business consent form, and there's a place for the signature, and the staff would fill out just the, the, the store name, address, phone number, things like that to connect further, um, but also just to say they've given us permission to have, you know, in our backyards national hotline, um, not in our backyards national hotline, but the national hotline posted in their, in their bathroom. Once they give you permission to post it, I like posting it myself. I mean, we're the ones doing the work, right? It's okay to find the joy going in there and getting your job well done sticker. So this is your sticker, right? So you're going to say, great, um, I'm going to post at eye level. Is there anywhere like where we like to post it is inside the stall um, on the back of the door. Some of these stores don't have stalls, right? It's like a one person only bathroom. Um, that's when you could go toward the mirror. I highly suggest I level them because the splash zone between soap and water can ruin the sticker over time. So anywhere, I mean, honestly, we're happy you got the sticker in there, but we just don't want it like high up on a mirror where no one's going to look at it, things like that. So if you come in and say most survivors prefer an eye level in the back of the stall where it's private, and if you don't have that, we like eye level at a mirror, they usually think, oh, they know what they're doing. So just act like you know what you're doing. You've posted them before. It's not your first time posting it and they will be much more comfortable that you feel comfortable about getting it in their bathroom. Um, so the sticker is in there, and again, you're just gonna finish off with, um, there's a training for convenience stores for your manager, if they're not the manager, to continue this you know, fight against trafficking, um, and that they can join that, and you're gonna leave that with them. So I just reviewed super quickly. Um, the missing children is your lead, the sticker is your heart, right? And then the training is like, man, they are on board. So those are the three things that you're gonna to wanna to present. And again, I would have one person talk about all of it and the other person write down um, you know, the name of the person because we're gonna to wanna to know how your visit went. You have one form that you'll fill out about your visit and it's a volunteer response form. Obviously we'll want you to know, we'll want to know what store you went to um, and maybe the person you talked with What's their name? And it's really embarrassing to ask them again, I didn't hear your name. So that's why I said have someone with a pen ready or a phone ready to mark down. You should already know the address before you go in. Um, but to get that person's name, just so you know you really talked to someone, um, we'll ask you, did you did you get to leave the missing kids card? Like, did you, did you leave it with them? And that's more of a reminder for you. Um, did you leave the partnership form for CSAT? And then how many stickers did you post? Because maybe there's two bathrooms, post them in both bathrooms. If there's a men's bathroom, post it in the men's bathroom. It's great awareness. And also there are male victims out there and there's so many more than we could ever imagine because no one's advocating for them to come and talk. Um, so they're out there. So get that, get that on there, get it in the men's bathroom too. Um, and then we'll ask you just, you know, one to five, like how was your welcoming experience? <laughs> like, did they shoo you out the door with a broom, like on the Apollo stage? Or were they welcoming and really wanted you to come back and talk more and you stayed in there for a good darn 20 minutes and you couldn't believe it. Um, so you never know your experience. Most people always get one no and then the rest are usually yeses. Um, and the no is just usually, um, concerned face they're not manager they just don't want to take anything because they probably think you're selling something and it just didn't translate well and just honor them and just try to leave that missing kids sheet what you can and get out but just don't leave the stickers with them um okay so i want to make sure i'm okay on time with you okay so i think it would be helpful to remember 
We'll be there Saturday for you between 9 and 10. We're going to have these forms with you. We'll have a link where you can actually just upload digitally and answer the questions all on a Google form questionnaire if you don't want to write the whole time. Know that we don't want you to go alone and we'll pretty much cover the rest one-on-one -on -one with you on Saturday. If you can't come, well, if you can come Saturday, that's great. But if you want to do your serve at a different time, um, that's okay too. Just discuss it with us so we can just help you with that and make sure we connect with you that day. We'll probably want to give you a number just in case you have questions and you want to talk like to me directly. I don't want anyone feeling alone in this, even if you're with another person. Um, and lastly, I want um, quickly Sophia to just come on board because she's done the outreach with us. Um, for the past few years, and she can just share with you how it went for her, and I think it'll just make you feel a lot better. So, Sophia? Hi, I'm Sophia. I've been able to do this serve uh, for a few years now within our backyard, and I'm so excited that we get to be able to do it right here in our own neighborhoods. Uh, I'm just going to explain a few things of my experience uh, doing this. Uh, first of all, we would drive up and park over to the side out of the way of other customers and then we would take a few minutes before we went in the store to figure out which of uh, the two of us from our group was going to go inside and who was going to be doing the talking and who was going to purchase something. Uh, then we would start off once we were inside with the sheet of the missing kids because like Cheryl said, that's the in. Most people want to help kids. So we would explain that and then move on to the stickers and getting that form filled out before uh, placing them uh, once they gave consent, if they were willing to do that. Um, you might get a no, like Cheryl said also. Uh, the very first store that we went into was a no, and they were just not willing to do it that day. And so we just moved on. And, um, but most often, most likely, and more often than not, people are willing to help. Uh, In fact, most managers would walk us back to the restroom and uh, wanted to see where we wanted to place them and stuff. So being very helpful. Uh, one time we went into a store and there was already a flyer posted right by the cash register um, that was from In Our Backyard. So they were totally familiar with In Our Backyard somehow already and uh, were just, more than willing to have us place the stickers in the restrooms. Um, because again, that's the safest place for uh, people to call or text that they need help. Uh, another time we went into a store and the worker just quickly was looking at the pamphlet of missing kids and she happened to recognize one of the girls and thought that the girl came in the store quite often and she said she would definitely keep an eye out for her, which was just super encouraging. Um, again, sometimes uh, the store workers wanna help, but they just need to call their manager and ask for permission to place the stickers. Um, that's pretty common um, in my experience at least. Um, yeah. Again, be aware if there's a men's and women's restroom to please post the stickers if at all possible in both, because um, that can be very helpful also. Um, I think that's it. And I uh, just hope that you enjoy this serve as much as I do. It's just a great, simple, easy way to have a huge impact in uh, people's lives. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Um, I was thinking something when she was talking, but now I already lost it because I got immersed in her motivation here. Um, yes, so again, remember there's only two forms that we need your signature. One is you, and one is the business store if they are going to post stickers. Um, that's really the highest logistic that we'll want you to remember is, is those signatures. 
um, to keep this a responsible serve um, and just really keep that language correct and that people are trained before they go um, out there and do the serve. So we just want to keep that as for your, um, not your protection, but just a protection that these stores continue to want these stickers in their building. So I know some people are very tempted to stick them on the gas pump. Um, and that's super helpful for the trafficker to know that people are watching them. So like, not so much. Um, but yeah, we don't want to tip off the trafficker. Uh, we more want it more private. So just keep that in mind. So there are reasons why uh, we don't want them anywhere. So the bathroom is the most important part. Um, I also suggest that um, when you see this, oh my gosh, look at it before you go in the store, create that space where you're doing this for kids, right, that matter and that are in our state. And you might find one that you just have a connection of you feel familiar with, or you can look at it and say, they kind of look like me when I was that age. Um, they look just like me. They don't look like trafficked children. Um, Cause even though they're missing and they might not be trafficked, they're definitely at risk of becoming trafficked. So just remember to like ground yourself, ground yourself in prayer. Um, we can pray for you at the car if you're nervous, like we're here for you. Like we're an outreach team. Like this is like, you. Like, it can feel real serious. Um, and just know that we're here for you and we're highly experienced in, in this for years. Um, so we're there for you and we're like so overjoyed that we can allow anyone to come in and serve with us. So we're probably the most excited. And then after you do the serve, you're probably like, that's why they're so excited. Um, because a staff person said, oh, I see this guy that comes in with these girls and I don't know what to do about it, but I know it's not an uncle and a bunch of nieces. Like, I just don't know what to do. So you're gonna give them a lifeline to finally report. And once you have that connection with the staff member, you're like, wow, like we're one team, like we're doing this. Um, so just know you will probably get an exciting story. Um, we'll try to share those as, as privately as we can, you know, um, as we go along. So that's the whole point of that feedback form is because we'll want to hear those stories. So we know as a church community, how we're doing um, and are we reaching? Because I really think you'd be surprised um, how well this can work. So I want to end this time with inviting Lorette to close in prayer, reminding you that we will be at the church at the D entrance, which is like the main entrance area, um, Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, we'll be there, you know, lingering around it if you can't make it, um, and just show up and be ready because God's going to move. Like, just be ready for it. Um, and then again, if you have any questions about it, I can't do it right after, like just show up and we'll be there or email us um, at our email. We're here to help you. Um, you can do this serve at any time, but for the first time serve, it's really smart to do it all together, um, even though it's trained through a Zoom call. So I'm really excited to see what happens. Um, and I'm gonna ask, um, yes, we also, someone's chatting. Um, and again, you can do it, you can do those forms online. There will be a way to do that. Um, and I think we're gonna send that. So make sure you register. If you haven't registered yet, um, I think registration is still open um, because then you can register and you'll get a little more lead on what's coming on Saturday. That would be helpful for you. Um, so you're not signing so many documents when you show up on Saturday. Um, I do know, most of you know, um, Ink 180 is that nonprofit that does free cover-up tattoos for victims of trafficking and gang members and um, the lead founder Chris Baker who's spoken at many of our events um, he's back in the hospital with another um, inf skin infection in his leg and this was life-threatening a year ago um, and it's back but it's caught soon enough where he's hoping to be on the mend and avoid surgery and the life-threatening situation that it caused him um, but again, his tattoo shop is his life, you know, is, is his life. Um, that's their finances. That's, he does it for free for the victims through the FBI. Um, it's a national serve that he does. So I just want to make sure um, that maybe Lorette would also pray for Chris Baker's healing mm -hmm. um, and that, that he recovers well because he's one of our main people in the fight for our area. Um, someone just chatted something to make sure I do something. I think it was Nita. If you could just tell me. They just like pop up and disappear. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I missed it. Um, do you want to say something? Yeah, I'll just, uh, I just had another idea while you were 
doing your presentation. Great job, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. We're going to get you doing this more. Mm -hmm. um, but people are going on a lot of road trips this summer. Mm -hmm. And so once you've done the serve with Willow, if you're going to Yellowstone, if you're going, you know, wherever you're going, grandma's house, you can stop and do this on your road trips. It just will infuse your road trips with a lot of fun and a lot of purpose. So just an idea. Thanks everyone. You're awesome. Yeah. And, and just to point that out, like we, um, Anne ordered um, stickers from In Our Backyard through Nita for our serve, but this is a, you can do this as an individual serve at, again, later on, maybe with a different team and go to our backyard website and figure out how to order the stickers. Um, so again, this is just to start that process. I hope we do it maybe quarterly or whatever we decide to do, but everyone can make their own decision on how they continue to do this serve with others. Um, so Lorette, I don't see your screen, but Lorette's close the prayer. Mm -hmm. And then I think- I hear you, Cheryl. Okay. So oh, I don't hear you. This. Yes. Um, and then, I know this might cut off at a certain time, but if you had questions, I'll stay on as long as the Zoom call lets us if you want to stay and ask questions. But once Lorette is finished with the closing prayer, you are free to uh, disconnect and we will see you on Saturday. So I will leave it to you, Lorette. Hi, everyone. I don't know who can see me, who's not. I'm honestly, I'm not really good with this Zoom thing. I don't know. I just hope somebody can see me because I can see a couple people here. But um, I'll ask that you all just close your eyes for a moment or just bow your heads. And just for a moment, I take a deep breath, just for a moment. Okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you that in the middle of this crazy, crazy time, this pandemic, that we were able to connect like this. And I thank you for every single person that dialed in, that made time tonight to do this, to listen to this. This is important. And I thank you that you have made a way possible for this. And I pray that every single person tonight, whatever that spark was, whatever that is in their heart, whatever it was that just, that gave them the courage even to log on tonight to listen to this, I pray that you just feel that, that you just, you just spark that and you just keep that going. I pray that your presence is with that person and whatever the person is just, whatever your plan is for that person, part of this ministry, whether it's to pray, whether it's to read a book, whether it's to go out this weekend, whatever it is, I just pray that though, just it meditates those thoughts, just meditate in their mind about this, about this, and that you just give them courage, each person courage to take that next step. As Nita said, it takes courage to do this. It takes courage to build your kingdom, Father. There's a lot of courage here, but it is written that we can do all things through you, Jesus, everything through you, we can. And I pray even tonight, just the stories that we heard or just the screens, whatever it is tonight that just may be in our mind or in our heart or in our soul, that maybe we just say an extra prayer for those girls out there that we just, just, that we just take a few moments tonight and we just think about those girls that are out there, those girls that may be in a hotel tonight, those girls that may be at a truck station this a truck stop this week and whatever those are i just pray tonight for those girls that are out there and that your presence is with them and they know that we care and that we love them and you love them that we just stop just for a few moments tonight and we just pray for those girls and then give us the courage to take our next step like i said whether it's just to read a book whether it's just to say extra prayers whether it's to go out this weekend whatever it is that you have called us to do that we just do that through your strength, not of our own. I pray that everybody that can hear me right now, they stay safe, they stay stay safe, they stay sane. It is an insane time right now. And that you just keep clarity in our minds of what we need to do, of what you what you want us to do. I pray that you bring us peace. I pray that you bring us comfort, whatever it is that we need, that your presence is with all of us tonight. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. We'll see you Saturday. And if you have questions, you can stay on, but otherwise, you guys are free to go. Thank you.